Welcome back to a whole nother episode of On The Porch. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, go over to the other platforms, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We're here today with another special, special guest. Like we say, guys, we're going bigger and better every time giving y'all this game. So we're back here again. I don't really got to introduce him, but you know, Dion Coopwood. Yep, yep. Dion Coopwood, man. Raised on the south side of Chicago. Uh, I grew up with a whole lot of nothing <laughs> and, and, and turning into a whole lot of something. If you operate in your gift, you are going to naturally grow. That's my gift. My gift is actually teaching people um, how to actually become the best version of themselves. The most important thing right now that'll stop everybody from being able to be successful, to be honest, is really credit. Take, they said the average a millionaire got seven streams of income. Take it from a multi-millionaire. I got more than seven streams, but it's not from different things. It's from the same thing that I'm doing. I just figure out how to extrapolate this one thing and create multiple streams from that one thing. Guys, I know it's been a great episode, but let me put you on game. If you've been in a wreck, let Blessing at your accident, your money, get you a check today. Man, go ahead and hit her up. Do not hesitate to hit up 888-7money8 for all your accident referrals and get $300 every time. I know you can use the extra $300. I can too. So go ahead up. If you know anybody that's been in an accident, your mom, your uncle, your auntie, your daddy, your daddy, cousin, whoever it is, go ahead and hit up. Tell them to follow her at Instagram at your accident your money right now and then tell her i sent you tell her on the port sent you and she gonna mess with you and she gonna give you a great deal let's get it done welcome back to a whole nother episode of on the porch guys you already know what to do make sure you like comment and subscribe if you're on youtube and if you're on youtube go over to the other platforms google podcast spotify whatever it is out there we're on all the platforms go ahead and leave us five stars say something nice so we can move up those charts guys guys i feel like we ain't been here in a minute like we ain't shoot last week off, even though we, giving. yeah we be having you know people getting fat bj eating good yeah. but bj been at the gym again you been back i've been back i've been back he been back so yeah it's man i'm just happy to be back with y'all you know y'all boys man because they look doing this for more than a year straight every week is it's good, it's good. <laughs> you, when you take one off it's like oh wow yeah. it's crazy so good to be back but bj <laughs> hey man it's good to be back like you said, we're coming back from Thanksgiving, but y'all already know y'all can find me at underscore BJ Real. Y'all been liking, commenting, subscribing. We've been growing rapidly, guys, so we just appreciate that. But we're here today with another special, special guest. Like we say, guys, we're going bigger and better every time giving y'all this game. So we're back here again. Yeah, we're back here again. I just can't believe you just skipped, you skipped the part, bro. I skipped it because go. Boy, you floated. It's okay. <laughs> we can't go back. Man. We got to do it. Go ahead. Amen. 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 Come on, man. You know, we can't forget that. But we know we're going bigger and better every time. So, you know, we had to get one of the biggest in the game, right? So I I, I, I ran into him. I said, you know what? I got to get him. I already had DM done on Instagram already. I, I didn't reply to that. No, you didn't reply. That's all good, though. Look, you like, bro, I don't know who these people you know, I, So many people probably DM you and hit yeah, you up about yeah. coming on a podcast and all that stuff like that. Yep, or come yep. speak and stuff. So, yeah. hey, look, I totally understand. It's just part of my job just to hit you up at least. That's it. Yeah. Right? So, and I, I get in the rooms to where I can see you in person yeah. and I approach you. So, that's what I like to do. But I don't really got to introduce him, but you know, Dion. Coopwood. Yep, yep. Dion Coopwood, man, going crazy with the Metro 2. I'm not, I'm going to let you explain it yep. because I don't want to tell nobody nothing about credit that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, who is Dion Coopwood? Like, who are you? What do you do? How did you get started in this? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, raised on the south side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I grew up with a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> and, and, and turn it into a whole lot of something. Um, you know, Chicago raised me, but ATL is paying me. Mm. Um, man, just... uh. Now at the point where, you know, being an adult, being a grown man, I'm a family man, I'm married, got three kids. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take care of my wife, my mom, three kids, man. We recently moved out to uh, the Atlanta area about, it's going on two years now. It's crazy how time fly. Um, but man, you know, being raised in Chicago it was rough. I was actually raised in the projects. Oh, wow. Okay. You okay. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. some of my friends didn't make it out. And the only thing that you thought uh, was possible in regards to making it out would be uh, either he was gonna play basketball, mm -hmm. right? you yeah. know, you gonna go to the NBA, which that's we we could clearly see that that don't always work <laughs> yeah, out for yeah. sure. Um, or you going to be on the streets, and you know that's the way you are gonna make it. And so for me, I chose. Man, when they in rap back then, 
Mm, not as much. Not as, not yeah, as much. It, it not back now. then. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm an '80s baby. So okay, yeah, it's yeah, either yeah, you yeah. was going do sell some drugs, or you was going you know game bang or whatever, sell some drugs, or you was going you know get into the NBA or whatever. So you had to meet them people in person back in the day. Mike. Yeah, yeah, man, this it went that it went. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't just dropping those subs nah, on TikTok nah, and going viral nah, on YouTube. Nah, <laughs> nah, yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't like that. So. But yeah, man, uh, basketball actually carried me through, and I was able to go to college, man, on a scholarship and play ball and stuff, and then um, life started lifing. Mm, you know what I'm saying? That's what, do. that's what happened. Yeah. Graduated. <laughs> lifestyle happened the same month that I graduated, um, a couple months after that. What happened? Give, my, give, my daughter was born. Oh. I already knew it. I already knew it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, you got serious so, immediately. So I had, I, I grew up real fast, and um, I started, uh, I started learning that I needed to be a man and um, take care of my family um, sooner than later. And uh, man, life just hit me. And so since 2008, um, I've actually been an entrepreneur. Mm. 2008. It's 2008. So since 2008. That's, so, more, than, that's more than 10 years. Yeah, but, bro. Golly. Yeah. What, year, what, was was your daughter? Daughter? what yeah. year was your daughter born? 2008. 2008. Oh, dang. Oh, so so that's right that, too. Is, that what, is that what kind of puts you out there? Yeah, so think about it. We got 2008 was when when the first y'all probably don't really know because y'all was super young but that was when the first recession happened i remember but that, i won't that I won't was the remember. housing market crash the recession happened so i'm graduating college recession happened and i'm having a daughter all at the same time you know it's so crazy nobody about hiring it? yeah that's crazy you know what's crazy about the recession see i ain't have much so if you ain't have nothing already it was like <laughs> you didn't even know it was a recession right <laughs> yeah. yeah you were just like well, it's we, we, just another day I, I didn't know it was a recession but i felt it because i had graduated college you think that you graduate and you think you graduate you got a degree to get a job mm. and so here i am graduating getting a degree trying to apply for all these jobs ain't nobody high oh man it's it's bad out here it's messed up so that's why i became an entrepreneur in 2008 because i nobody wasn't hiring so i had to i was i had started my clothing brand i was trying to sell clothes that wasn't working out and then i was a travel barber at the same time so i'm i'm going here going there cutting people here trying to make a little change just to you know what i'm saying put food on the table and put some diapers on my on my daughter that was it bro god you were still in chicago at this point still in chicago at this mm. point yep thanks so, okay i got you so so pretty so so you started the you doing the barber you're doing the travel barber then you got the clothing brand. Mm -hmm. Did you did you see success with that or? Uh, nope. I didn't I didn't really make no money. It was just like I was making money paying bills and then I was losing money because I was trying to travel. I was putting money into inventory to buy clothes. Nobody wasn't really buying them like that. So it was like they was buying them, but then like at the time I didn't really have a mentor or coach, so I didn't know no better. So I was just buying inventory in hopes to sell it instead of doing pre sales and then selling what I already sold. So I'm sitting mm. on it. I still got clothes today. That's crazy. I still got clothes today that I ain't that I ain't sold in like a tub. My wife be like, "Why don't you get rid of that?" And I can't because that was like one of my first. I'm still kind of like, like yeah. emotional about it. You know what I mean? But it didn't work out, and I did that. So I ended up getting a job in 2009, though. But I still was trying to. I'm now working a job. I'm part time doing all of this extra stuff. I'm just trying to make ends meet. You know what I'm saying? So from 2008 to 2016. While I was working, um, I still was working my job, and I was selling clothes, cutting hair. I was doing all that stuff all at the same time. I got a question. Yep. So, and it's just something that I just feel like, because we got a younger, younger audience. Yep. So I'm like, what's the difference? People, people only know entrepreneurship today. Yep. What's the difference between entrepreneurship today and entrepreneurship then, like when you started? That's a great question. So today, I'm just, I'm not, I ain't trying to be rude to me, but today, y'all got it easy. I'm just being honest. I believe it. Like, you could sit on this podcast right here, talk about who you are, what products or services, and you can sell straight from the internet. And people will buy it. Yeah. That's you get on yeah. Instagram, you can make what they call content. You can make reels, you can make posts, and people will, and you can say, link in my bio, and then you look up, and you done made three, four hundred dollars in a day. Like, that's easy. But when I started, I had to call people. I had to call people. I had to go drive to their house to make sales. Mm. And sit down and convince them. It wasn't no like internet. You, I'm not from the bad net. What's bad some on the internet? Yeah, they're like yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not. Make that's sense. not. Yeah. That's not. That's not. We're not. That's not realistic. Back then, it wasn't. It wasn't realistic to just be just sitting there buying stuff on the internet. How it is today. Today, it's cool to buy stuff on the internet. Yeah, like that's why like Black Friday, nobody wasn't in the stores because they cool shopping on the internet now. Yeah, they like since COVID them. happened, and now even your grandma cool using Zoom. She's cool shopping online now too. She's not. It's not like that. You know that that friction of you know scarcity to shop online. Now I'm cool with shopping online. But whereas with me back in the day. Um, think about, so from 2008 to 2016 was when I was part-time. 2016 is when I lost my job. This is the big difference. When I left my job, now my job was paying me $130,000 a year. Oh. 
I was at I was at I was a district manager, store okay. manager for Sprint T Mobile. Okay, okay. Num- number one in the area, number one in the nation, number one everything, right? I left that to pursue entrepreneurship in 2016. So when I started, I was cold calling and door knocking to make sales. I was selling life insurance and doing retirement. Oh, planning. okay. Yeah. How, how did how did that help you in your in your journey and what you do now? It built up a tolerance. Like I couldn't like. You got to think, if I had the tolerance to call people that I didn't know and to go to houses to sit with people that I didn't know, today is easy. It built up a tolerance of me being okay with accepting people People telling me no. You know what I mean? Like, I, I heard more no's than I heard yeses. So, for me, going through that, like, it just allowed me to grow through what I was going through at the time. Mm. And so, it, it, it grew me into this entrepreneur that you see now. And that's why most people, they see me now, they say, well, dang, bro, doing good. He's amazing. No, no, you got to look at the past. You got to look at the resume of the individual. Yeah. That's why we say success has receipts and success and failure both lead clues. Yep. You got to go backtrack and look at what a person is doing to know where they at right now. Mm. Like, don't ask somebody, like, what book are you reading? What are you going? What, what are you studying right now? Don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Ask me what I did yesterday. Mm, ask me you, what I did 10 years ago. I've been this 16 years. Yeah, I feel shit for me. Yeah, for sure. So that's not even... You know what I'm saying? You're not even where I'm at. You ain't go through nothing yet. Bro, think, think about my first eight years. I didn't really make no money. I was part-time working a job. And I still kept my business alive. That's crazy. And then think about now the last eight years, I've been full-time. And I didn't really like... It didn't really pop for me until like the last 36 months. That's so we crazy. so we talking about somebody who 16 years total, the last three years is when they really popped, but they had to go through 13 years of, of rejection, no's, disappointment, failures, overcoming obstacles. Like I'm talking about, bro, I got kids. Yeah. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Like I got three kids, I got a wife, I got a mama that I've been taking care of my whole life, Dang. and they've been depending on me. Imagine that kind of pressure. And it just popped off for me the last three years. Just, that's crazy because a lot of people just, um, a lot of people, especially the young, the younger people, they just don't understand that yeah. it really take work to get here, right? Yeah. So especially to get where you at, right? Because yeah. I sometimes, I know for a fact that I, we, I've been doing for like four years just doing real estate, which yeah. is not in today's time. That's a lifetime. That's a long time. That's a, that, in today's yeah, time, that's a lifetime because mm-hmm. people switch from business to business. Going to job, quitting the job, going back to business, quitting yeah. the business, going back to a job. Yep. So if you ever stick with something for that long, they like, all right, but really, this is the man y'all should be listening to. But I transitioned and pivoted too, though. Because think yeah. about it. From, and nothing wrong with that. From 08 to 16, I did. I, was, I had the clothing line. I was cutting hair. From 16 to, I would say, about 19, I did life insurance and retirement planning sales. From, from 19 to about maybe 20, 21, I did solar sales because I started my own solar company. That's where my Instagram name come from. Oh, Phenomenal power. I was wondering. I was wondering how, you know and you never changed it. You just ne- ne- just because because it fits me. I'm phenomenal, and I always bring that power. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that came from when I started my solar renewable energy company. I switched my name up on Instagram mm. and all my platforms. And then from 21, and so while I was doing a solar renewable energy company, in order for people to go solar, their credit needed to be good. Oh, so I okay. said, I said I need to go back to financial services, financial literacy, which I was already doing that because I was doing life insurance and financial planning. So mm. I went back to my roots. So I said, all right, in order to help people go solar because they needed a 650 credit score, I started the credit repair process while I had my solar company. And then I noticed it was like it was more so I was like pulling teeth to get people to go solar, although it was good money. We used to make like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a house. Okay, so the money was good. But in order for them to go solar, I had to get the credit right. But more people was coming for credit. And I had to go get the people for solar. Mm. See what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I need to just focus on just really like the financial literacy piece and get back to my roots. So then like right around the 2020, around that time frame is when I really just say, you know what? I'm going to drop. I'm going to eventually drop the solar thing because it was just too many uncontrollable oh variables. Goodness. It was too many uncontrollable variables. And I said, I'm going to just really focus on that. So I started to fade out the solar piece and just more focus on the financial literacy piece of everything and go back to what I, what I was doing, which I started that in 2016 anyway. Right. That's when I went full time. So I said, you know what? Let me go back to that. And that's where things just kind of start to really take off because I really got back into something that I was already passionate about anyway and I was already doing it. Mm. And that's crazy because yeah. it's like most entrepreneurs, it's like once they get that selling background or just went through that whole experience they just run with it and just turn on full entrepreneur you know that's crazy because i I mean i went door-to-door too right i I went door-to-door when i was when i was 19 yeah went door-to-door that was 
that was when I first started entrepreneurship, and that just really showed. That really made me say, you know what? I I love college and everything just off of that because I yeah. mean, it's just it's possible. You able to hear all those no's and everything like that. Now, it, hearing that, that many no's in the day, walking in the hot sun. Yep. From, I feet, mean, feet killing. I me. mean, going like I mean, walking up hills, getting chased by dogs, all that, all that good stuff, all that, and it all just builds a different type of tolerance, right? Yeah. And it, that's why I really, I really believe that anybody that get a job, first of all, do a commission first. Facts. As you're a young kid, Facts. if you're watching this and you're like 17, 18, whatever yeah. it is, get, get a commission job. First of all, you get paid off performance. Why would I want to get paid? That's it. Off of what they tell me, I could get paid when I can go get <laughs> when I can get paid off of my performance. I'm gonna do yeah. that. Yeah. Now you said something re really, really, really important that I, I don't want a lot of people to miss. Yeah, getting back to the root of things. Yeah, because a lot of times we get so caught up, and I, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I was actually, I'm actually dealing with that right now. Yeah, because I started, so I wholesaling. I was one. I've been doing wholesaling for a while now. Boom, podcast. We've been doing this more than a year now, and that's something that I was like, all right, boom, I'm just focusing this and then speaking. Yeah, but then I start getting around people like y'all, right? Yeah, I'm hanging out with Will. I'm hanging out with 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 everybody with the Lambos. I'm yep. like with them in the group with yep. them. Yep. And they're like, man, we selling courses and stuff. Yeah. But then I realized that my businesses that I was doing before started to suffer because I'm just so focused. I'm focused. I'm focused on trying to teach as well, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with that. But you have to know what's for you. Yep. Yep. So like that's really important. So how important it is for you? Just that's my story. Like right yeah, now, I'm yeah. like literally like right, I'm not I'm not doing the, the coaching, of course. Right now, I just need to focus yeah. on what I was what I got going on. Just get back to the roots of what I had going on. Yeah. How important is that for people to be able to have that awareness to know what they need to do and when they need to go back to their roots? Yeah, I think it's it's a concept of understanding that if you really want to be successful, um, you have to do what's comfortable for you. So what comes easy to you but hard for other people to do. And a lot of times I think that we disrespect our gifts and our talents that God has given us mm. because we be like, like, like you'll walk in the room and somebody be like, man, bro, you killing it. You doing this. You crushing it. Crush. You be like, no, I just don't. Yeah, that's just, mm, yeah, you, you downplay. Yeah. You don't even realize how good you are at that thing because they, they trying to figure out, they saying, I ain't got that in me. Yeah. And you don't realize how good you are at that thing because you just think that that's just what you're good at doing. No, that's called your gift. Mm. And you need to tap into that. And like you said, we need to stay within our roots or go back to our roots because that's where the money is at. So you can provide ultimate impact when you understand your value at the things that you're good at. And you'll start to notice that you'll focus on the impact that you have over the income. But the reality is that if I'm impacting people at a high level, the income is going to come anyway. You see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Like, so for you, whatever it is that you're good at doing, all you do, all you got to do is just strategically focus on that and don't look at, don't have a shiny object syndrome. Don't look at, okay, over here, what they're doing over there, what they're doing over here. Just focus on what you're good at doing and, and stay grounded in your roots because that's where the blessings are. Like God said, be fruitful and multiply. Right. So if we look at what he's telling us to do and we're planting ourselves like a seed, Based upon our gifts and we're deeply rooted and remember, we said we're going to stay focused and stay grounded on our roots and yeah. what we used to and what yeah. we know, like what come comfortable to us. Most people are running around here and they trying to do this, that, that. They're not focused. And then you're also trying to do this, that, and that. And you're very frustrated mm -hmm. because it's not working out for you because that's not who you are. That's not who you were called to be. You're, you're not operating in your gift and your element of what you were called to do. You got to do what you were called to do. And then you got to actually, like you said, now it's no, it's nothing wrong with being around the group of people and being motivated and inspired. Yeah, no, and if no, they no, say no. they teaching and, and selling courses or whatever, but you have to also teach it and sell it the way that, again, that comes easy to you. Right, right. Because again, if you operate in your gift, it's not going to be, it's not going to be hard. It's yeah, easy. Yeah, that's true. It's super easy. Like for me, I teach twice a week. That's easy for me to do. I actually enjoy doing it and I get paid a crap ton of money to teach. You know what <laughs> and, and you enjoy doing it. And I enjoy time. doing it. So for That's me, I'm, I'm not grinding. I ain't, I ain't hustling. I ain't out here. I'm not doing none of that. It's to me, it's almost kind of cringeworthy when somebody tell me they hustling, and they grinding. That's crazy to me. <laughs> Let's think about it. If we operate in our natural element, when the last time the sun struggled or grind to shine? Never. Like clockwork. Like, it, it just do it. It just do it. Yeah. When, when the last time the grass struggled and grind to grow? <sighs> it don't. It don't. It just do it, ain't it? Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah. It's, 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 it's going to get it done, right? It's the same thing with humans. If you operate in your gift, you are going to naturally grow. Mm. Man. 
Oh, I just hope y'all just that just that's crazy the way you put it. Yeah. Because you never hear you never hear nobody put it like that, right? Because you hear all the grooves and hear all the people talking about it. Oh, I'm grinding, I'm hustling, I'm doing nope. this every day. Nope. And, and you like, bro, nope. no, I'm not bro, doing that. When I'm teaching, I actually feel it? bad when yeah. I when I'm not grinding and hustling. Bro, and it's like what I'm saying is I'm not Of course it's, you it's work. like it's the it's the right. So what I'm this the word like me, I'm going to outwork anybody, but I'm I'm putting in the work within my gift. So it yeah. doesn't feel yeah, so it don't feel like work. So I don't so I'm I don't have to compete with you. I don't have to try to compare. I don't I don't feel like I'm working. It's a it's totally different. I'm just outworking you within my gift. Mm. So when I say I'm I'm operating off of four hours of sleep, it's not that I'm grinding or I'm beating myself up. It's just that I'm constantly putting in the work. So when I can't sleep at night, when it's 10, 11 o'clock and you done went to sleep and I'm up to two, three o'clock in the morning, but I'm looking up different banks and bureaus and who pulled what, and I'm looking at the compliance standard, I'm I am just I'm just operating in my gift and I'm just focusing, I'm studying my craft. So that way the next time I teach, I got some new information to give people that is going to impact them at a higher level. That's it. And I guess you operating like within like your gift, like you said, like you're naturally gonna like outlast anybody that's yeah. just feeling like they gotta hustle or grind or finesse people to do this. And think about it. And so when you when when people so energy energy is contagious, right? And people can feel and they can see and they can hear and they can understand energy. So when people hear me and they see me talk, they say, "Hmm, I like the way he talks." Yeah. He sounds pretty, he, he sounds confident. He sounds like he know what he's talking about. So then what end up happening is people end up becoming attracted to me and they want, they want me to coach them. They want me to mentor them. They want me to mm. pour into them. And so then when I get to coach them, I mentor and I pour into them. You can go to my page. You can see people start getting results that they never would have gotten because the reality is that all I'm teaching you how to do is operate in your gift. Take the things that you're good at. So you scramble. You all over here. You all over the place. I say, nope, focus. Let's focus on this one thing. This is what you're good at. Yeah. And then let's take this one thing and then not try to say, they said the average a millionaire got seven streams of income. Yeah. Take it from a multi-millionaire. <laughs> yeah. I got seven, I got more than seven streams, but it's not from different things. It's from the same thing that I'm doing. I just figure out how to extrapolate this one thing and create multiple streams from that one thing. You build, you build on it vertically. That's it. Vertical integration. That's it. That's what, I don't got to go. I don't, now I don't have to have a clothing line and cut hair and do real estate and I don't got to do all of this stuff to, in order to make a million dollars. I could still focus on financial literacy and teaching in that and, and how to make different streams of income within that same thing. Mm. That's and, it. And now just to go back because you said you were like selling solar but in order for them to get the solar they had to have the credit. Mm -hmm. So what necessarily were you doing like with their credit to like help them get the solar? You know, the episode is fire. I get it. But we have to make sure that you get your taxes in this tax season. So why not get them done by the best in the game, KDP Tax Services? I mean, they're going crazy right now. $7,000 cash advances starting January 2nd. Guess what? That's a pun approval though. But also, they're in all 50 states and it's virtual. So you ain't got to worry about leaving the comfort of your home. They also going crazy with the referrals. So you want to make a little cash? I know you do. I like to. So go ahead, hit them up, get the referrals as well. And also, they do tax preparation, especially for the self-employed. Guys, I know you hate doing bookkeeping. I hope hate I know you hate doing all that stuff. So to keep all that stuff and get your taxes prepared, go ahead and hit up KDP Tax Services right now. They're going crazy. BJ, I mean, what you got to say about them? Guys, don't delay. Get your taxes done today. And why not from the best tax specialist in America, guys? The best in the game. Y'all can follow her on Instagram and Facebook at KDP underscore tax services. She even has a website, guys, that you guys could go to. It's kdptechservices.com. And her phone number, hit her up, hit her up, guys. Her phone number is 910-704-3253. Don't delay. Get your taxes done today. Let's do it. Are yes. you a credit repair man? So then I was. I was. <laughs> I was. And, and, and I'll, be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Uh, at that time, I was with, with Solar Plus the credit. I was doing about maybe half a million dollars a year at that time. And so we talk about. 2019, 2020, right? Okay. So it was like, all right, cool. I'm thinking big man on campus, can't tell me nothing. I'm making way more than anybody around me. I'm thinking I'm hot stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then and the reality is that for most people, that is $40,000, $40,000, dollars a month. That's great income. Um, so in order to help these people, I had to, so that when they come through the system, if they got declined, we will follow back up with them and say, hey, listen, Let's pull your credit profile because this is the reason why you wasn't able to go because it was a no money down program. Mm. So there was no money down program. There was incentives through the government for them to go solar. You know, you're doing all of this great energy saving stuff. You're helping, you helping pollution and all this other crap. Cool, good. All the people want to know is how can I get this on my house? 
and pay no money down. So we would go back through, we would evaluate their credit profile. So if they need to go through the credit repair process, we would take them through that. If they just maybe just needed a little credit enhancement or whatever the case may be, we would help them with that as well. And we would make $1,000, $1,200 per person doing that. And then we would turn around once they're ready in the next month or two, we would take them to solar and it would make another $10,000, 20000 on that. That's crazy. People just need to hear that because you just, um, what you're doing is you're able to take something that you know how to do and implement to a service that you already were providing, right? Mm-hmm. So that way you, are, you don't have to go after two different customers at yep. that point. Yep. You were just going after one customer Same and one, one customer just yep. need two things. We, we, man, the Figure thi- out the problem. The thing is, it's just, yeah, the thing is just like um, really put yourself in position to uh, work smarter and not harder. That's that's really all that it is. Yeah. And and figure out and find a way to get it done. If there's a will, there's definitely going to be a way. And so you always just got to find a way. But here's what I'll tell you. This is the truth. Um, even doing that and making that a year, although that is great money, I wasn't even at that time operating in my gift. Mm. How so? Because my gift is actually teaching. Mm. That's my gift. My gift is actually teaching people um, how to actually become the best version of themselves and mm. taking what it is that you do and how to operate in your gift. And so even then, um, and or just teaching or teaching other people how to operate in their gift because I was actually providing the credit repair service instead of actually servicing the people and showing them how to either service themselves or provide the service to other people. I wasn't. I wasn't teaching. I wasn't. Multi- like I wasn't multiplying myself. Remember, God said be fruitful and multiply. Mm. I wasn't being fruitful and I wasn't multiplying. So I would find people to go service. I would bring them in. I would do the credit repair process. And then I would, you know, that would be that in and out. Mm. Instead of saying, let me teach you how to do this yourself. And then you could go make money doing it and teaching it to other people as well to be just like me. Yep. So I, I, didn't, I didn't become a multi I didn't get to where I'm at doing the service. Uh. I got there actually servicing people. So you were just taking everybody's math tests and finishing it for them. Exactly. Instead of teaching them how to take the test, how to get an A on it and do it themselves. Mm. Right. So it's like the Bible says, if I fish for you, Uh I can feed you for a day. I was about to say that. Right. But if I teach you how to fish, I can feed you for a lifetime. So it dawned on me. I said, okay, cool. This is when I first got my first mentor. I flew to Miami and this was in like October of 21. Flew to Miami. I decided that I was going to get a mentor. Boom. Got my first mentor. October 21. By November of 21, I started teaching what it is that I do to make the money that I was making. Mm. So when you started teaching it, so 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 right now, what is exactly were you teaching these, these individuals? Were you just yep. teaching them repair? Or? So, so at the time, I was running my credit repair company, right? Did you, so, did you quit solar at this point? At that point, I did. Okay. Yeah, All right, I, cool. So, I, so I, I, get- I completely eliminated that. And I was just only just doing, at this time when I got my mentor, I was only doing the credit repair service, right? Boom. So then let's just say, let's just say we was doing, we're just, without the solar, we would probably do in credit repair probably about 20 grand a month, 20, 30 grand a month, right? So then boom, doing that, when I first started, when I did my first mentorship run in November, I made, I made in a week what it would take me all month to make by teaching as opposed to doing it. Mm. So more people was willing to pay me to show them how to do it themselves and go make money doing it rather than just pay me to do it. You know what's crazy? Is that, is that, is that, le- I think that would be less work, right? It was way less work. That's what I'm saying. You ain't even got to go fill the paperwork out, send watch, the paper out. I was, I was, I was having to market myself every single day, every single day, every single month to get these people to come pay me to do their credit repair. And then I will put up a post and I would say, hey, look, I'm going to take these next 10 people and I'm going to, let's just say, you can pay me two grand and I'm going to do a three day online cohort. Well, I'm going to mm. show you how to do this, repair your own credit and run a credit repair company and make two, three thousand dollars a month and you can pay me. So that I can like two, three days, I had 10 people pay me two thousand, twenty thousand, boom, just like that. That's crazy. And then I would do I would do a three day online class. So I'm teaching. So then I got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I took let's just say I took all of the money on Friday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I teach you I'm done for the month. Twenty grand done. Golly. So like you that. so so you think so you think when you started so obviously when you started teaching, I, I guess you, that's when you started really operating your gift because it just started flowing to you. Yes, it started flowing to and you, and I, I started having really good money problems. What you mean? Because people were like, "When is the next class?" So then what ended up happening was when we got to like April, and this is when I moved out here to Atlanta. By the time April of twenty twenty two came, when I moved to Atlanta, I had already had all of my students for April, May, and June. Golly, because I had a wait list. Mm. So then I was like, you know what? Ah, I was like, I was like, God dog. So then I, I did like the feeling of 
already having I already had made the money. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, God. But now I, I already but then I can't so now I gotta teach these classes. I'm like, you know what? So in April, I end up just holding a class with like 40, 50 people in it. Mm-hmm. But then that beat me the hell up. I said, oh my God. <laughs> the class was like four hours each day. Oh, when man. I would normally teach for like an hour and a half, two hours each day, I'm doubling my work. I said, I can't never do this again. So then what I end up doing is that's when I end up creating a course. Mm. I said, I need to be able to be readily available at any given time okay. to be able to, again, just teach what it is that I know and multiply myself. So then that's when I was able to create a course. And then people was like, yo, cool. Let me get the course. Why not? So it was the same, you get the same effect, you get the same outcome, but then now you get it in a format in which you can watch it at any given time because some some of the people when I would, like, you got to think, if you paid me in April, but then now we saying we're not holding class and you on the June list, you're like, God, dog, I got to wait till June to get, I yeah. want to go now. Right. And yeah. I said, we got good problems, so we're making good money, but I also got a problem because I got people that are just waiting, 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 and I don't want to keep having this problem, so I end up just teaching everybody, but then, I, so that made me, that I was able to get rid of the wait list, but then I created the course which allowed me to just at any given time onboard somebody and take somebody and let them start learning right away. Man. Okay, so now you got so you built this course out. Mm -hmm. Now, I be knowing you as like this, what, what, whatever this Metro 2 thing is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So did, did, you, I, did you like create something that helped people? Or what, like what yep. is that? Yep. Explain that to me because right. you're, so you're not the credit repair guy anymore. So yep. what no, are you not, now? Not, what, not the credit what, repair guy what anymore. What are you now? So this will happen. Mm -hmm. and, this is, and this is how you know when people really do what they do mm -hmm. and you can really tell somebody like if you ask the story is there there's legitimacy like mm -hmm. i just walked you from 2008 you all, did, the way all the way up yep so you now this is how it happened i moved to atlanta in 2022 in atlanta to do credit repair as a misdemeanor wow so i said so, hmm. wait so a lot of people doing credit repair illegal right now right? i ain't got nothing to do with none of that yeah, I, i'm just saying i, I, don't, can, I ain't i ain't, I, say, I, ain't say, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that how you how you feel about the influx of credit like it's 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 like an overwhelming amount I don't, of people. But see, I don't, but I don't know. Though, I guess. We don't know if they're really doing credit pill or if they're doing credit consulting. They can be just charging people to consult them and tell them what needs. I don't know what so they're you doing. Can, you can consult, but you can't. Actually yeah, you, 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 like if you look it up, to actually like remove items and charge people, like you can't do that. Okay. Mm. That's and just to get into it, like what's the like the most common thing that's like wrong with most people's credit or like what they come to you for? Like what like will be a Yeah, people case? people I mean people always got missed payments because you know when you're going through life, life just be life and people lose job at a young age and you got missed payments, that tears people's credit profile up. Everybody, everybody got student loans. We know that. <laughs> everybody got student loans. Even if you ain't finished school. That's killing you. Whether you <laughs> whether you finish school or not, everybody got student loans. Um, and then at some point in time, again, life's just life. You lose job and people got repossessions. They got evictions, um, things of that nature. And a lot of people uh, come, they got bankruptcy too. So you don't hear about it. Nobody talks about it until you actually are an expert in the industry. And you see more people got bankruptcies. You got, you're like, yo, I didn't know like all of y'all got bankruptcies, right? Mm. And so people come to you because they need that assistance because um, credit is actually holding them back. But when I moved to Atlanta, man, I realized that I needed to focus on providing a different type of impact to the people. So at that point in time, when I moved out here, I was I, I was able to really kind of hone in on the fact that I needed to to take a different direction with this credit um, company and credit repair process. And so I remember going to an event um, with Russell Brunson, and he was talking about if you don't have a continuity, you don't have a business. And I was like, you know what? I said I need to I need to be more like Russell Brunson. I need to create some form of a software. So I created a Metro Two compliant software um, that automates the process with one click of a button. So whether you're an individual who wants to repair their own credit and not pay somebody else thousands of dollars to do it um, for as cheap as one forty seven a month, you can actually get the process started. Now a lot of people say, well, how many months I got to go? Well, the average person go three to four months. I've seen some people go four, five, six months. But you got to think about it. Even if you went five or six months paying one fifty, you paying five six hundred dollars. Let's just say. And if you got a bankruptcy that's got eight hundred thousand dollars in debt in it, I think that that's a fair exchange. You can't really Definitely. argue that. And then think about it: you got educated and you did it yourself, so now you know how to do it. You use the software, so now that means that you are qualified to go do it for somebody else and charge them. So you hold on. You say a click of a button. Like what? You, what you mean by that? Like so? Like so what does it do? Like so what does it do? So the software it leverages Metro Two compliance, and I'll break that down. But it also has artificial intelligence. So based upon your credit profile when you upload it, it is going to organize it based upon the account type and then the positive and negative accounts. Mm. And it's going to say, all right, here go y'all your, your negative accounts, and just with the click of a button, you can attack all your negative accounts and send those letters to the credit bureaus. How is it sending? How is it sending the letter? Like it's actually, like how does it get the letter sent? 
because the software has all of the addresses based upon the credit bureaus and um, what's listed in your credit profile. And then what you do is you, once you hit the button to generate your letters, you can also click a button where we have third-party mailing service inside mm. of there, and they'll mail it off for you. So the same price that it would have cost you to have a printer, an envelope, paper, ink, stamps, you can pay that same price to get it mailed off with the software. Wow. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Thanks. So, so I guess so. You thought about so what made you come up with the AI part of it? I guess did you did you did you see people getting but tired that, but of that, do all that? Yeah, because that was a part of the process. You gotta think. Here's the truth. Um, when you think about credit repair, the only one true way in order to repair somebody's credit is factual disputing. That's what 100 percent of people that's in the credit industry. That's what they doing. So that means that they have to look at your credit profile, look at your credit report, and they have to say this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And then they got to create a letter manually. That's a lot of work. And put it all together. <laughs> Right, they got to copy, paste, copy. They got to put it all together, put all this special wording in there. They got to print it out, and then they got to mail it all, lick stamps. They got to do all of that. Yeah, no. So even if you if you do that, the only other way that people start coming up with was consumer law. So now you got to know the laws that has been violated for that consumer, and you got to again put this letter together, take this account, put it. I said, man, that's too much work. That is a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Because just imagine, you, just imagine you got a hundred clients. Yeah. Imagine if you got a hundred clients. You got to do that for a hundred clients. Then you got to remember when you sent the letters off. Then you got to every thirty to thirty five days you got to send the letter off for that particular clients. This is too much. So I said, we need to automate the process. So whether you want to do it yourself or you want to start a credit repair organization or you're already running one and you want to get it, you want to get better results, faster results, charge more money and work less. Ooh, we. This is, this is for you. So creating a software, you leverage your Metro 2 compliance. And again, Metro 2 compliance is a compliance standard that was put in place by the CDIA, which is the Consumer Data Industry Association, which is the three bureaus plus Innovis. They set up the round table in 1997 and said, we need to put something in place that is going to... Um, stop consumers from having to always complain about inaccuracies on a credit report. And if items do not meet these five compliance standards of reportability, it can't be reported. Mm. And so all we're doing is just sending in letters that's communicating with eOscar. eOscar is the real defining tool in which items are going to stay or get deleted from your credit profile. Most mm. people don't know that. What, e -Oscar, <clears throat> what is that like? A so eOscar is an online web-based coding machine. So, okay. so when you send in a letter to the credit bureaus, there's a human that opens up the letters, but there's not enough human manpower to actually read the letters. We get mm. tired. We got shifts. Yeah. So what's happening is humans, they open up the letters and they just feed the letters into a machine. The machine is eOscar. Mm. And it's an online, web-based, Metro 2 compliant machine. So when you put in your letters, if you send in a Metro 2 letter, you're speaking the language of eOscar. So now you're just telling the computer, it's just reading code saying delete, 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 delete. It's in compliance to be reported. And all the machine do is just spit out a letter that say these items got to get deleted. Oh, wow. So now if you're sending in any other letter that's not speaking the language per se, you're having a hard time. And now you're leaving, you know, your, you're leaving your future in the hands of the credit bureau. So then they're going to say, well, let's see what, let's see what e. Oscar said. Well, we're going to keep it reporting because we get paid to report this information. Whoa, so the, the, you telling me the, the, the boroughs get paid? To so all every every item that's on our credit report every single month, they are getting paid to report. So at and say, all right, cool. He got an account. He got an account with us. He owed me some money. I'm going to pay you $20 to report this every month. So the credit bureaus, they don't want to delete it because they're going to lose money if they delete. So <laughs> really, the, the reporting stuff and not taking stuff off of your, your credit report is it's for the credit bureau. Because like, they're getting paid for it. Yeah. I'm thinking it's something that the government doing just to... No. Nah. No, the credit bureaus is LLCs and they companies like how if you go start an LLC, yeah. that's what Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, that's what they are. But they just regular companies. They're not they're not government entities at all. But why would the state or the government, I guess, make it like illegal for people to show you how to make your credit better? Like what, Yeah, why would they do that? What do you think like what the that? plan is behind that? It's really is here, and I mean, it, we can get into the thick of it, but the reality is that it's just a concept of keeping the rich rich and the poor poor. There's nothing else other than Cause that. Cause you got to think, it's not a law that's saying, oh, you can't teach people how to read. So why can't you teach people how to keep their credit? Why Why are you not teaching them in grammar school and college? Why are you not teaching about credit? And you're putting a law. Oh, wow. You, you got to think they're putting a law against that's, it. Like you can't, like you can't show people <laughs> oh, how to do it. Some of the most, the most important thing right now that'll stop everybody from being able to be successful. To be honest, is really credit. That doesn't even sound ethical. Like it's illegal to teach. It has to, to be because I mean, but you gotta understand. They, you know, it's a it's a whole nother, and we could talk about this all all day. It's, <laughs> a, it's a whole nother agenda. Of Come stuff on, going on. Just because we we noticed this from the um just from the videos that we drop on our podcast. So like we drop we drop stuff like like this information, right? Oh, yeah. learn how to do credit. This learn how to do real estate. This. I mean, you get people that watch it. Yeah. 
So you know, on YouTube, there's like a thing called impressions, right? So Correct. you get you get something called impressions. So our impressions be like eight thousand, nine thousand. We dropped something that said OnlyFans and sex industry, twenty oh, thousand impressions. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. They just send they just send out. Yeah, they, they want them to see. They sex. they want to. So it's, it's just like it ain't no different than if we posted something on Instagram right now about somebody fighting. That the one, that thing going through the roof. Going through the roof. Going viral. They go, they go, it's gonna go viral. They are gonna put it in front of everybody. Let you start educating people. They, ain't, they ain't, nope. Same thing. Oh, same thing. Oh, definitely Instagram. Nope. We got a video of a million view, a million views. Talk about you know just girls. It's just like a country or thing. Come on, man. Something with a million views, and we post stuff all the time. They, it's, it's, I know it's, it's brainwashing, bro. <laughs> That's it's crazy. They take it to a point where they say this is illegal to even talk about. Yeah, and, and it, it, we already know it's just a whole other agenda. But I mean, that, the, the fact is that you built something that can actually help us. Like this is something that's actually going to. This is actually Bro, going to be revolutionary. But are you afraid of somebody actually coming after you? Stop, stop you! <clears throat> I've actually, I've actually had thoughts of that. Cause I mean, this I'm is, like, I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 Cause I said, it, I like mean, you said, it don't happen. Yeah, course, it, but. it really is revolutionary. Um, this is groundbreaking. Um, I mean, you gotta think, man. It's people that's using this software that's we dealing bankruptcies, too long. Like people are really truly getting a fresh start. Cause how often, like, like a year, would somebody have to use this to just keep their credit like squeaky clean? You don't just use, just, just use it one time. Just one time, Bec and you just have to have good financial practices so that way you don't fall back into that situation again. But then it's like we're it's a three part fold. We got people that are already running credit repair organizations, not getting results for people. They're mm -hmm. using this software now. They're getting results, which is which is helping. They're making more money than getting their clients what they the results that oh they my, need. You, then, you, then you got the people you being fruitful. And then you got then you got the people who are let's just say they need to repair their credit because now they want to become a homeowner. We're helping them. Right at a very low cost. Then you got people that are working jobs and not making enough money, so then they're able to use the software and help family members or friends and make a little extra two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month using the software because the software just is gonna get you results. Like most of my students using this software, they make six figures doing it because it's it's super easy and they got the credit confidence to go out there and market because now I know I'm gonna use the software. It's going to give me results. I, I know that. To, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm gonna get results. It just it's not am I gonna get results? It's just a matter of time of how long I need to use it because most people say, well, how long is it gonna take me? I can't tell you that because your credit profile, my credit profile, and yours is different. It's like our DNA. It's made different. So you may get a bankruptcy off in one month. It may take me five months. It may take him three months. It's still a bankruptcy, but it may take different times because I don't know what conversations you had about your bankruptcy with different creditors and you know and so forth. I don't know how old, how new it is. Everything mm. is different. So you can't give a person a an allotted amount of time. It's just that you just have to consistently send off your rounds of letters every 30 to 35 days using the software and you're going to get results. Golly. So, so when you first started, like where most of your clients were they like for Personal, like the buy like a car or house, or was it like more business? When I when I first started to provide the service, it was more so like I want to get a house, I want to get a car. It was just a service. Then when I got into teaching, it was more so I want to teach people how to actually go do this themselves to get that done. But then more so how to actually start a credit repair organization to impact people, the masses. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and then make money actually doing it. So that's kind of it was really more so like you said, just being fruitful about it. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, I got you. So and you got to think about this in the last. In the last like 18 months or so, bro, I got like over 11,000 students now in 18 months. 18 months. Now, if, listen, if it's good, they're going to talk about it. If it's bad, they're going to talk about it too. Right now, it's good. <laughs> but it's you, know good. What, you know what? You know what? I, you know what? I like what you just said about that. I'm going to show you too. You know, what, you know what I like about that though? I like the fact that you said right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because yeah. let's be real. Business is business. And a lot of people don't understand that. Some stuff can just be for right now. Watch this look. How many, how many students in that group? That's 7,300. All right, watch this look. 7,000. Right? Yeah. All right, that's a Metro 2 group. Watch this other Metro 2 group look. How many students in there? 6,000. 6,000. 6,000. Yeah. He ain't lying. I got another one. I got another group. Oh, <laughs> he not lying, y'all. I'm telling you. How many people in that group? Say it's seven students. 1,300. How many, so what's that about? That's about 15,000 students, ain't it? Yeah. I ain't even know. It just grew on me. <laughs> I, I, I said over 11,000. That's, yeah. that's when last time I checked. But yeah, no, nah, it's, 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 it's growing fast. So it, it is growing fast. But I, you know what's crazy? I know you said something about having a fresh start. Yeah. When they, they're deleting this stuff off of their credit reports and stuff like that. So, yep. <clears throat> so when you, one thing I know is like people say you just never could get rid of student loans. So when they get this yeah. stuff deleted, like, do they have to? Do they got to pay it back or, or how that work? Uh, yeah, so that's, no, that's a really good question. Um, when you get items deleted, that doesn't remove your obligations to still pay the creditor. 
That's like okay, like give example. If I if I borrow a thousand dollars from you, right, mm-hmm. and I never pay you back, right, and you go let, like you can actually hire a company where you can pay to actually have that reported if you got a contract through me and you. Oh yeah. So let's say yeah, I come yeah. to your biz, your LLC, and I and I borrow a thousand dollars. You can get that reported on my credit. Right. Now, just because I use Metro Two compliance to get it deleted. Do I, don't I still owe you money? You still owe. I'm coming to get mine. See what I'm saying? So now you just may have to go get a lawyer or something to get your money from me. Or you may end up having a call a, a call agency, collection agency. You may sell the debt or whatever, but the money is still owed. Mm. So just because you get it deleted, I don't mean you say, oh, but what it does is getting deleted. And now I, could, I may go to him and say, hey, bro, I bought a thousand. He'll go look at my credit and say, oh, credit look good to me. Yeah, here go a thousand. Oh man! So, so now it, what it does is it cleans the credit profile. So now I can go become a homeowner. I can get my dream car. I can go ahead and get that job. I can now now I can actually go do things other than that bankruptcy sitting on that. I'm still loan sitting on that. That eviction, that collection, that child support sitting on there. I can use Metro Two Compliance and get it deleted. Now I got a fresh start. Man, did you? So all right. So you obviously just doing a lot of stuff for for like just the masses overall. For right? sure. Yeah. You have you have a family. So how is this? How has this help help you and your family? Like. Overall, like generation, like how has that helped you all? Have did you did you always have good credit? Did your wife always have good credit? Like what's what's going on? Because I'm yeah, trying to yeah, think. Yeah. So did you figure this out? I was like, okay, I got to fix everybody credit. You know what? Um, I was always financially savvy. I've okay. always been the guy that people go to to ask questions. You know, money and financial questions. That's why I'm in this because I'm just 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 me, bro. Right. I right. ain't I ain't just pick something that just seemed cool. No, this is this what I love doing. I've all I've always been this person. So for me, I've always. Um, had good credit. Um, never had those issues. You know, my wife, not not the same. When I met her, my wife was not savvy at all. She didn't care about no credit. Um, she was in the five hundred. Now she's in the seven hundreds now because yeah. obviously understanding you know the power of credit and um, knowing how important it is. And she her stuff is a one now. But like my wife th- went through a stint, you know, where she had repossessions and bankruptcies and stuff yeah. like that. And but using Metro too, we got it all deleted off. Mm, and now she's got great personal credit. She got business credit, and she even still to this day, like she know what I do. But even to her, still to this day, she still be like, I don't know how you be doing what you be doing, or how you be creating and coming up with this crap. <laughs> she was like, but you be doing it, yeah. And and it's just it's 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 shocking. But from a family perspective, what I can really say is me, man. Again, like God say, you know, when, your gift will always make room for you, and just by me operating my gift, bro. Generational curses have been broken. Like, mm. poverty really ran in my family until it ran into me, bro. Oh, wow. You feel me? I, until it ran into you. Yeah. I got a good question. So, like, what's the advantages of somebody, let's say, okay, these two people, they make 150000 a year. Mm-hmm. So, one leverages their credit and one just uses their cash and doesn't use credit at all. What's yep. the difference between the two people? That's a beautiful question. Um, the person that's using their cash, they are putting themselves in a very bad position because at some point in time they're going to run out of money. These are facts. Mm. right? The person who has the money and has the credit that's leveraging credit, uh, they're doing something that they need to be doing. By, by using a credit, they're continuously strengthening up their credit and credit profile, which to any lender or any business associate that, that they want to go to to get a loan or borrow some money, they're going to say, I'll do business with you. Mm. Because you're doing business with other people, you have great relationships. Right. And I can see your credit history, your credit age. Right. The relationships are key. Right. It's just it's kind of like if if I've never used my credit ever at all. And I went to you and I said, hey, man, bro, let me uh, let me borrow 10,000. You could probably say, yikes. I don't, know I don't know about that. But if I went to the cameraman, and I went to you mm-hmm. and I've already bought 10,000 from y'all and I paid y'all back. And I went to you and said, hey, bro, I already bought money from them and paid them back last month. Can I borrow 10,000? What you going to say? Go ahead. There you go. You hear what I'm saying? No, pay it back. Pay it back. <laughs> a lot. A lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. A lot because a lot of people out here teaching, and I can't all. I can't blame it on people that's teaching it, but I can yeah. blame it on the individuals just taking in, taking the information and not. Most of the time they just not reading through the information all yeah. the way, or they not listening all the way. They just hear go leverage the credit. Yeah, nah. And that's it. Nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, so I got a brother. I got a brother. Like, he just worked like a regular job or whatever, but like he 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 still at works and stuff. But he's like. I need to get an LLC so I can just get some credit cards. No, nah, no. Nah. I'm like, tell them don't do that. Yeah, like, why, why not do that? Why yeah. not do that? Because a lot of people just nah. saying, hey, go, 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 run it up. Yeah. And get the loan and or get the credit card and then 
Figure and out I, and, and, I, and I'm gonna speak to that and wrap it into his question that he asked. He like, yeah. what's the difference? It's like, first of all, oh, I like you want to create the relationships, so you want to be able to, you know, just leverage the credit. Then by using your credit, you're continuously building up your credit score and credit profile. It's called a credit score. If I'm using my debit card, I can't build credit. Mm-hmm. I can't build credit score. Then every 91 days, if I'm using my credit cards and leveraging my credit, I can ask Chase, Bank of America, American Express. Navy Fred or whoever, I can ask them for a credit limit increase. And now my credit limit increase is going up. So I may have started with a $5,000 limit, but then now, let's just say a year or two later, I might be at a $10,000, $15,000 limit, which gives me more leverage to go do more things and have more readily available cash. Mm-hmm. right? And then I'm not even using my cash, so I'm protecting my cash that's actually in the bank. Mm. So like, think about it. If, I, if you lose your debit card right now because that's all you, lose, you use and somebody actually spent, let's just say $5,000, that's all you had in the bank, you hot. But if I lose my credit card and that's a Discover credit card and they spend five thousand dollars, I don't give a damn. I'm gonna call Discover. I'm just gonna it call Discover be, and say it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't me, bro. Before. And they they take and it. they just reverse it. They, yeah. And they gonna say, all right, cool. We are gonna see a new card in the mail. That's, it's a different <laughs> feeling when you with Discover. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a different feeling when you lose your debit card. Yeah. As opposed to a credit card. Yeah. Like I need to protect my cash. I need to protect my capital. Then too, think about it. When you have credit and you have kids, like me, I got three kids. I'm now slowly but surely starting to add my kids on my credit card as authorized users, helping them build credit. So by the time my kids get out of high school, they're going to have seven, 800 credit scores. Mm. Now, instead of me trying to teach them how to build and leverage credit, they can use their own credit because I'm teaching them how to do that stuff now. Again, remember, we're breaking generational curses around mm. here. So now they get out of high school, they can get their car in their own name. They get their apartment in their own name. I already taught them how to use credit, how to use it correctly and responsibly, just which goes to like what you were saying about your brother. This, not, this is not no go get an LLC so I can go run up a bag. That's crazy talk. <laughs> Before you go get an LLC, have a business plan. Mm. I'm going to start this biz on this date This is what I'm going to do This is how much money I need Let's plan this thing all the way out Then go register and get a business Then you go get your, you know, your, your lines of credit Your 0% APR credit cards for 12 months And when you get them You leverage them the right way So that way you're spending money But you're making money at the same time mm. Like I spend $100,000 a week on credit cards You know what I'm Golly, saying? Golly, I'm what ad? But ads, marketing <laughs> I already anything, know anything, anything for my business Anything for your business But yeah. you got to think though so, like, let's just say I'm use, I got a credit card with Chase, $100,000 limit, right? And it's like, I use that and my other credit cards minimum every single week. But I'm three to four times the return on my investment because I got a business plan. Uh, so, this 100 k is making, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And credit, credit is important, guys, because, like, I know two times in my life I bought, I, I bought two cars just off of going to the bait and asking them how much would they approve me for. It, and yeah. I got two vehicles off of that. Yeah. Like just asking them, I didn't spend forty, fifty thousand for those cars. That was just me and my credit going to the bank and asking them, can I have this amount of money? To your point, watch this. Look how look how important you just said credit was. You went to the bank, got cars, right? Mm. Everybody watching this, if you want to let's just say start a Turo business, you can go to Bank of America right now. You're gonna personally guarantee, which means they're gonna look at your personal credit, but they will take it if you got an LLC, they will put it in your biz name and not report it to your personal credit, mm. which don't which don't tip your debt to income ratio and you don't have the liability on there. But then based on your credit, they'll put that on your business credit. You can take them cars, put them on Turo, start running up a bag, and then with the profits and the proceeds that you get from the money from Turo, pay the bank back their money every single month, and now you're making bread. That's a business plan. A business but you plan. leverage your credit in order to do that. And, and you just, now you just created money out of thin air from leveraging your credit. But if you got crappy credit, you can't, you don't get that opportunity. Think about the wealthiest people on earth right now. It's people that are in real estate. How did they get, how did, how did they obtain all their wealth? Credit. credit. They went to the bank and said, let me get a line of credit so I can purchase this property. And then when I purchase this property, I got a game plan. I'm going to pay you back with the proceeds and I'm going to keep the profits. That's literally what happened. That's, That's what crazy. happened. That's crazy. Red caught on. Yeah. One oh. of the richest what are we talking about? Yeah. He be saying that all the time. He was like, if you make $500,000 a year, you need to go spend 490 of it and put it in stuff that's going to make you money so you don't have to pay the IRS. No. <laughs> Bro, that's because, that's because credit is kind of like, you know, it's, it is a form of money. It's currency. And if you look at the definition of currency, it's, it's to flow. It's got to move. Money got to move, yo. We got to move this money around. That's crazy. You can't hold on to it. That's crazy, yeah. Nope. Got to think about it but like can that. You, can you walk us like more through like how to um, help your kids out and build their credit? Can you just like just walk yep. know, like, people through That's, So it's very important to actually have, you know, access to, to, to credit and lines of credit like, you know, Discover, American Express, Navy Federal, um, you know, those particular banks. Any banks that you have, you need to have a credit card with them 
And the reason why is because you want to be able to, and then at any given time, some lenders, they don't even care. They, they don't, your kid could be one, two, three, you can add them as authorized use. And what it does is whatever credit history that you have, that actual line of credit, the history on that card, that gets added to your credit profile. So when you add an authorized use to the credit profile, you're positively affecting four out of the five credit metrics. So you got the five metrics is payment history, you got credit card utilization, you got credit age, account mix, and you got inquiries. Mm. So the only one that's not being affected is inquiries because I'm not applying for a new line of credit. I'm just getting mm. added to the line of credit. So all of these other four metrics, you get the benefit and you become the benefactor of that actual line of credit. So if my mom, let's just say, added me on a 30-year 30, 30 line of credit through Discover that's got a $20,000 limit, that looks like I have that available. So when I go to the bank or I want to get a house, they look and they say, oh, you got a $30,000 line of credit you had for 20 years. That's what's up. Yeah. That looks good. Golly, I like that. Yeah. So that line of credit looked like income to them. Yeah. So hell, if all else fell and he loses his job, he can still use that credit card to pay us. That's true. Like, that's just how they looking at it. So if you walking in and you only got your job income, I mean, it's only going to get you so far. But if you walk in, like me right now, I have I have $400,000 in available on a personal credit side and about a million plus on the business credit side. So to have $1.4 million, there's nowhere that I can't go. There's nothing that I can't do. That's crazy. No bank will deny me. $1.4. <laughs> he, he Come on. He couldn't get paid for two, three years. And I'm still yeah. straight. Still <laughs> straight. But that look, but that's how I got started in entrepreneurship too in 2016 when I left my job. I had forty thousand dollars in credit. And I said, well, if the average American could make it off forty thousand, I can too. Yeah. So I so I, I paid all my bills, kept food on the table, took care of my family, paid my mortgage, paid my car note, paid my rent, all with credit cards. And so I started making money. And I didn't really start making money when I went full time my business until like the fifth or sixth month. So I went five or six months off just leveraging credit cards, paying the minimum balance back in order to really make things pop for me. But you had, you had a game plan. You had, had a game, game plan. plan. You, get your, sure. you get your wife your credit card and be like, go shop. So she's added, yeah, she, 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 yeah she's good. She's unlimited. Yeah. Her, 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 my mom, and my daughter. We good. Oh, man, that's great. Because you know, my, my wife, like, oh, she just didn't even see the credit card. And I'm like, man. Man, when you, when you get to a certain point, you man, like, you know, you yeah. got to, it's so, it's, it's you, okay. when you reach that milestone and you say, all right, cool, this is what I've been waiting on. Yeah, I want to do that. Of course, you, you want to you gonna You'll do it. Yeah, for sure. And I know you I will. Know. How long you been married? Um, This is going on four years. Four years? Four years. How long How long have I been together? Uh, going on 14 years. So we was together for about 10 years before we... Dang, what took so long y'all get married? I like to ask. I wasn't ready. You weren't ready? No, nah, I wasn't ready at the time. So, so, she, so she, she stayed down and was like, I'll just wait on you. Yep. Dang. That's yep. crazy because you know you hear a lot of people that's like... And it seemed, I mean, I, it seemed like it's working out good. Of course y'all had y'all yeah. ups down. I mean, that made, of did. course you did. Of course you did. But how, how was you able to make it through like 14 years of relationship, especially going through entrepreneurship and trying to figure out how to make that work? And trying to make a relationship work, trying to have a family. Like, how did that, how did that work? I know it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's a lot of work. Mike. It's a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it just, like you said, it's just the work. You got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be willing to take the time, energy, effort to put in and uh, just make it work. We put time, energy, money, effort into anything else to make it work. Yeah. You got to do the same thing for your relationship. So we went through premarital counseling, went through uh, marital counseling. Uh, we did everything, man, in order to invest into our relationship to really make it work because it's not easy. How long did it yeah. take y'all until you needed the um, premarital counseling? Uh, we went to premarital counseling right around a year, I think maybe like five or six. Five or six. It started getting rocky. Things kind of, you know, start kind of like feeling like they was going to wow. fall apart. You know what I mean? Year five or six, y'all was together, but y'all got married at, what year y'all did you get married at? I guess like 19. Dang, so you still after before that before you because usually people do that right before they get married. No, nah, we. So y'all was able, y'all still was able to say y'all still want to be together like after mm-hmm. that because I mean, it, honestly, like you really. I mean, I guess did you have kids with her at the time? Um. So we, when me and my wife got together, we both came to the relationship with with okay. a child. Okay, with a child. Okay, got you. Did y'all have kids together at that time? Not at that time. No. Nope. Okay, so that, that's what I'm saying. So you not married, so stuff get rocky. You people just leave. We could, we could have, because you wouldn't lose nothing. It's like so. What, so this is what we did. What we ended up doing is we actually uh, we went through. We separated for a year and a half, and was just trying to see like this. Do we just really want this, or do we want to be with somebody else? We're trying to pursue other stuff. So we went for a year and a half. We went and dated other people, and oh wow, we were just like yeah, nah. And y'all came yeah, back yeah, to each other. Yeah, we and was like, like nah. No, I tell people don't, don't force nothing. I think my, yeah. my producer just said something like that. He was like, hey, I can always bro- I can always go back. And if it don't work out, and just see if it works, and if it don't work, then we must what meant to be. That's it. Dang, that's crazy. So if you needed like pre 
pre-marriage counseling, like, let's say, like, the first year or two, would you have still, like, been with her? Yeah. You would have? Yeah. It's, I mean, you got to think, man, when you, when you feel like you are in your calling and you are, you know, with somebody that you're supposed to be with, the time don't matter. Mm. It's like, I wasn't, like, our issues at the beginning of our relationship, they were because of me. I wanted to be with other women and cheat and do all that bogus mm. stuff. Like I was I was the one that had the problem. She didn't have the problem. So we wow. had to go to counseling for me. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like we had to go to counseling for me because she, and she didn't want to stay because she like, well, you not ready to be with me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm committed to you, but you not, you know, showing committed actions to me. So let's just separate. So then that's when we end up separate, but when we got back together, you know, we realized that, you know, not only do you got issues, I got some issues that I need to work out too. So let's go together and support each other and work on our issues. Question. Would it have been, would it have worked out if it was the other way around? Like if she was to mess around, if she was to talk to other men, why is the other, would it have worked? I think that it still would have. It's hard, it's hard to accept that though. It is hard to um, accept that. that. And most times women are the one that have to accept cause, cause, here, Cause here's the truth. When I was messing around and it kind of was causing us to have friction, um, before we decided to mutually agree to separate, she had started seeing somebody else too. So mm. I was dealing with that too. During that time. So I was like, all right, let me get my stuff together. And then while I was trying to get it together, she was like, well, you taking too long to get it together. I'm going to go be with somebody else. And I was like, well, dang, what you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I, so, what are you doing? so now I'm torn because you know, as men, we're not as strong as women. We can't take no, you're like, hey, you want to be with somebody else. What you mean? So I was like, what you know what? Like? I said, you know what? I probably brought this on myself. Like, it's cool. And that's the biggest thing. It's yeah. kind of like you always got to look at your look at yourself. I mean, and everybody it got take a different fault. level of maturity, bro. To just say to say, you know what? Yeah. What yeah. Am, what am I doing wrong? Right. Yeah. It, even even if it's a situation where it's like, and I don't say anybody should accept like somebody messing around or nothing like that. But even if you do leave that person, you shouldn't say, all right, what did I do that made them want to do that? It was me, bro. I was I was I was I was. He's a wild in so dog. many words, I was kicking her ass. Mm. And um, she just was like, "Dang, this is, this ain't gonna work, you know. This is not, this this ain't what I signed up for." And so, when she started sending somebody else, I selfishly said, "Dang, this ain't what I signed up for." <laughs> but but then, yeah. at the, but then at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm like, maybe I need to get me together. So I said, "Well, let's separate." And I, you know, I spent more time in church and spent more time with God and got me together. And then, um, you know, I ended up hitting her up about a year later. It was like right around her birthday, and I just texted, her, "Happy birthday!" And then. That text went crazy. It went because because we, we wasn't talking at all. Yeah, yeah. Like we yeah. went a year and a half without talking. When I texted her happy birthday, she lost it because we wasn't talking at all. Oh, so yeah, she missed you. you yeah, said she, happy birthday and gave her a gift, or you just no, I, no. I just I texted her happy birthday. I'm like, I know your birthday is tomorrow, and it was like eleven o'clock or something. The day process. I just want to tell you. She's like, my birthday until tomorrow. You know my birthday. I said, I know. I just want. To, I said, I just want to tell. You. She's like, no, nah, you just wanted to be the first. I'm like, okay, just wanted to be the first. And that sent her through the there roof. There we go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She just went crazy. Like, let's go to breakfast. I want to take you to your favorite spot. And she was like, I just really miss you. And these niggas ain't shit. And she just got to going crazy. There we go. And that was it. That was it. Did y'all, did, did, does having um, a woman, like, how does that, do you do, you do more for her because you feel like she deserved it because she did put up with that? Um, or, you, or would it's, you have it's, already been doing it's, 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 it's like a, like a little guilt yeah, thing. Come, on, like, now. Like, Come on It's It's not, it's like, you know, it's, it's like you guilt. definitely deserve it. It's like one of those, you've been with me since we were shooting in the gym. You've been there, you know, you've been there when I was, I was decent. You was there when I was broke and you decent, you know, when we, when we up, up. So you definitely deserve to, um, be able to, you know, enjoy life. I tell my wife all the time, I say, you know, um, I say, I love the life that you're able to live now. Mm. Like you was you was there, and you know, and most people would would leave and never would have came back and would have gave up. And so I'm like, I enjoy that you get to just just enjoy your day however you want to. Yeah, you know. Mm. So I got it. So the conver- So what what type of do, have you ever had to have a conversation with like, hey, look, slow down on smash. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I can I can give you one example that happened probably about six months ago. We were going to the mall shopping for, I think, for like somebody's birthday. And then we was going out the country. We were shopping and for birthdays and going out the country. And in that three days that we went to the mall, on herself, she spent 11000 On herself? Oh, on herself. Not in the gifts that she bought for the other. I said, babe. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I was like, wait a minute. I said, damn. I got to the car on day three. I, I sat on the car. I said, babe, before, before I pull off, we got to talk. Let's have a coming to Jesus moment. <laughs> I said, you out of control. She's like, what I do? I said, Bro, in the last three days, you spent 11. I said, I ain't even, I pulled out. I said, all I bought was some shorts. That'd be me. That'd be, oh my God. I said, goodness. all I got is a little pair of shorts. <laughs> These joints, I got some Gucci shorts. They were $700. I said, that's all I got. You got all this stuff. 
I said, she was like, I mean, I, no, 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 no. I said, when we go to the mall, you got to relax. <laughs> but it's like, so it's like, it's like she could spend money. There's, it, it ain't no real, yeah. it ain't no real, like a lot of the amount, but it's just like, you know, just kind of be mindful too, because I tell all the time, like, you know, I don't, I don't know when every, you know, it's going to be our last day. And I just want to make sure the family is good, financially stable. So that yeah. way at any given time, you're going to always be okay. You I know got what you. I mean? So. But yeah, you know, when you see all of this money coming in, you just be like, yo, let's go crazy. And it's crazy. I'm not even really that guy. Like, I do little small stuff here and there. Like, I'm always going to pour into my house, like, have a nice house, have a nice car, you know, from time to time, I buy nice stuff. But I'm not like, I don't overdo it. Like, you got it's, a Lambo. It's, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't overdo it. I just got a $300,000 car. That's it. I mean, man, it's, it's like every so often you got to treat yourself. Right. You know? Right. right. <laughs> Like, why you want to make all this money and not? (laughs) (laughs) BJ say something. He'd be like, he'd be like, I'd be trying to say, bro, I'm doing it because of this. He'd be like, if that sits well with you, that's all right. Go ahead. (laughs) There you go. That's you got to tell yourself. I got you, man. That that that's good though, man. The fact that you ever take care of your family, have a good time, and then the fact that because a lot of people, you know, these days, the only reason I ask how long you've been um, together and how long you've been married, because and I ask you that question because I'm like, a lot of people be like, bro. We've been together for how long? You, you ain't put a ring on it and leave you that stuff like that. And I mean, I guess, I guess that's like some type of rush. But I mean, I guess you waited until you were ready, really. That's it. Now, yep. it like, what made you say you wasn't ready? Was it like financial or? No, nah, for me, I was, I don't, I mean, I, there were a point where I didn't have it financially, but I always knew that I was always going to be okay. So for me, it was just more so just really not being mentally and spiritually ready to go to that level. Like I just... I wasn't ready to just sit down and be with one person and be okay with that and not see nobody else. And so now I'm at the point where I have tunnel vision. Like the only person, the only thing that I can see right now is just my wife and my family. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only thing that I can see. And it just it it takes a it takes it takes some time and it takes some uh, maturity to get to that point, especially when. Um, you know, you start to receive and, and accomplish different goals and different levels of success, like to make the kind of money that I make because it's ridiculously abnormal and it's extraordinary. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of people who, when I get to these levels and I'm watching the kind of money that they make, they they operate, they don't operate the same way that they op, like they normally operate. Like mm-hmm. that money has brought out a monster. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about, <laughs> like <laughs> no matter how much money that I've been making, I'm still the same cool, humble, mature guy. Yeah, you like, said that's multi multi million. We talking about eight figures, bro. How much? What, how much you made in a uh, month? The big, the biggest month you ever had? Uh, over a million. Over a million? Yeah, cause I made a million dollars in one day before. Oh, damn. oh, I, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't mean to say a day. My bad. I tried this month. I said yeah. a minute day. No, that's Sorry. okay. <laughs> yeah. that's I've, I've I've made a million dollars in a day multiple times. I've made five hundred thousand in a day multiple times. A hundred thousand in a day multiple times. So you got to think when you when you make that kind of money. How you, yeah, I've been saying how you stay grounded. You, yeah, yeah. How do you stay grounded? No, how much how much you made today? I just kind of feel like I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> Let's see. I'll check, I don't want to. I don't know. I mean, he ain't gonna. I mean, he, he good for the audience to see. Cause we just trying to let you know, man, it's possible. Yeah. Go get his the the uh, what's your, what's your program called? Oh, the Metro Two. Metro Two. Yeah. And go ahead and get that. Start your credit repair business. Yeah. Throw it in there. Got yeah, to. We're gonna we're gonna put it in the description for it. So look, this is just one of the businesses. You can see what it made today. What what's that? It's a pretty good day. Six thousand. Six thousand. Oh, hold on, How much so far for the month? A hundred twenty-seven thousand seven hundred. Okay. So that's so far for that one. Right, let me see this. Hold on. Hold on. Oh man, look, man, he's yeah, going just crazy. Hundred thousand past couple. Of I got days, I got like I got like six I got like six seven different LLCs in business. So this one we made two thousand and this one yesterday, a couple hundred dollars today. But then like for the quarter, how much for the quarter? Let me see. Right there. That's the quarter. Yeah. The last forty-five days. Three hundred seventy-three thousand, not dollars. Yeah. So that, Let yeah. me tell you. I mean, hey, look, it's it's just it's great. So that the, the question, the how is that you, good enough? Y'all want when we keep going? Nah, you good. We that's nah, you good. That that's was good. A, so so look. Huh? You, so with you, with, how do you pretty how, full last, off of that? <laughs> <laughs> the, pretty full the last off thing, the, I guess, the, one of the last things I just pretty much have to ask is how, how like you said, how do you, how do you remain that that humble guy, especially when you get money like that? Because look, yeah. I. I if you've seen up, we done had a lot of people on here. Let me tell you. Yeah. And we heard, we done saw different type of people come in. We saw people mm-hmm. with wives. We mm-hmm. seen people without wives. Mm-hmm. We seen people that. We done, yep. we done, yeah, we done yeah. seen all. And yes. they, they tell us the stories off off the air. They be like, hey, look, man, I'm, hey. this, I'm doing that. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. 
it may look at you differently, but all right, yep. if that works for you. Yep. So, how, yep. and, but, and that's because they get so much money. And it, I sent like literally, somebody left that girl because they was like, bro, I was just getting so much money, bro. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't. He was real. He was like, I've bro, seen I, it. I just couldn't. Do I it. It. He was like, he was like, when I get right, now, I'm gonna come back around. But right now, he was like, bro, I'm getting too much. Money. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> for me, it's for me, it's um, you know, I I think that it takes a different level of uh, spiritual maturity. That's what it is. And so, you know, um, especially for those who are married or not married, you know, the word says, Proverbs 18 and 22, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and favor from the Lord. So when I found my wife, I found favor. And so I know that my success is predicated on, you know, my wife and how I treat mm -hmm. her, you know what I'm saying, how I take care of my mom and how I take care of my family. And I, and I, I, I don't want to go away from that or steer from that because I feel like and, and or I know that as fast as he give it, as fast as he take it away. Yeah. So for me, I don't want to go down a road of um, infidelity and things of that nature because I got money and I can go out one and I can do like like when you make the kind of money that I make, most women wouldn't leave because it's like they like look. Dude broke and he cheating on me and I'm still with him. So why wouldn't I stay with you? Real, you know, this is a real conversation. That's, that's real stuff. So for me, I'm not the type of person. I don't want to take advantage of that. For me, it's just more so uh, a different spiritual level of maturity where um, I don't I don't want to be a bad example. I know a lot of people are watching me. I know a lot of people are following me. I know a lot of people are motivated and inspired by me. So for me, I understand that I'm operating in my gift and I am the example. And so I have to continue to be a good example. And I don't want to I don't want to let down. Um, you know, God in so many words and and then there is there is, you know, for me I, I may regret certain stuff and and then uh, I will know why my gifts is not working the way that they're supposed to work and I will know why things are falling apart and I will no longer be the king of the castle, so to speak. Um, I just don't want to go down that road. I don't wanna I don't wanna go down there. So I know that my success is heavily predicated on my wife. I always tell her she's a big part of that. I always include her everywhere I go so that way I don't put myself in an environment to want to cheat or look at another woman. I always, when I travel, I bring my wife with me. I don't care if I go for a day, if I go for three days, I go for a week, we rolling. Like, I'm we going to Dubai next week. I got to speak in Dubai. Guess what? My wife and my family, they're going with me. So she, does, she doesn't Listen. work currently? She does, she, well, she runs a business. She's a she's an esthetician. Okay, cool. So she does like all of the brows and face mm -hmm. shoes, and you know, what I'm saying do all of the waxing and all that stuff. So she got her own salon and all of that other stuff. Um, so she does that. She runs her business and um, she supports me and she takes care of the family and, and she do what she got to do. So, you man, know. you know what? <clears throat> That's one of the things that I, I just know because think I just all of it just ultimately go think before you leap. Like just think about it. Like a lot of people just think surface level like oh i cheat it ain't gonna be nothing i just do it once it's way deeper than that. watch this the money that i make i'm making that money because i'm attracting people to me you attract who you are mm. so think about it most people right now are labeled as scammers oh yeah let's talk about it. nobody looks at me like that yeah, I can, yeah because I can they say that. uh he's a good man he's a godly man he has a family he has a wife he has kids he means well. He seemed like he talked well. He's got a good head on his shoulder. Why would he? Why would he want to risk all of that and scam me? Yeah. So I'm I'm a non-threat. But other people that may be in the same industry and doing the same thing I am, if you're not married or if you just got, let's just say, a girlfriend or you got multiple women on your page and you always partying, you drinking and you kicking it, they like, I don't know. So they're gonna pick me over you. Yeah. Any day, any day, I'm picked. I am I am the chosen. One, because of how I carry myself and the things that I do and things that I'm involved in or things that I don't involve myself in. Oh, my goodness. And pretty much people, I don't care, people judge you. That's what, that's what it's for. I yeah. mean, the internet is, is don't they be like, don't yeah. judge a book by a cover, but you should these days. Like when people, look at, <laughs> when people look at me, they say, I want that. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to be successful like him. I want to have a wife. I want to be. I want to be married like him. I want that. So in order to get that, I got to get with the person that has that. It's the same like having a mentor. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to have anybody mentor me, he's successful. He's been successful. He's successful now. He has a successful marriage. He has a successful family. If I want all of that, I got to have him coach and mentor me. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's real. And I got and I got a question because um, we're gonna make this the last one. Yeah, I got like <laughs> I got like a friend where he has like probably about 20 credit cards like probably some open line of credits too so like just starting out like how many credit cards would you recommend a person and like as far as 
Like they just, just need to get whatever they need in order to get started. That's it. Like You don't have to have 20. If he wants to have 20, maybe that was a personal goal of his. Um, but it's really also about the limit. So it's kind of like you can have 20 credit cards that may only equal up to 10000 mm-hmm. based on your limits. Or you can have one. Like I got one Chase Inc. That's a $100,000 limit. I don't need 20 credit cards. Yeah. I got more than 20. But just that one credit card right there does it. Yeah, it gets the job done. So you know that's really what it's about. Just get what you need. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you need, whatever you need, man. It's like we probably been here for a while. I know we've been here well over an hour. I just don't have my work <laughs> phone, so I don't, he usually texts me. But I was like, oh, that's why I ain't got to text. I don't have my work phone. But been for a minute. But what we like to do is we drop this episode at the beginning of the week on Tuesdays, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so we like to leave our audience with something they can actually go implement this week and actually better their lives, right? Whether that's mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, or spiritually. Yeah. So we want you to go in to give them some game. We call it give them some. Give them some game that they can implement right now to better their lives and get better this week. You're going to look to that camera right there. All right, listen. All I can say is um, if you're watching this episode, man, um, just tap into the natural version of yourself, the version that you know you want to be. Because right now you're, you're, you're this person, but you want to become this person. You're currently here, but you want to go there. So all I'm telling you is that your current situation is not your final destination. Um, tap into the best version of you. And I know a lot of you guys want to start growing scale of business. It's going to start with you leveraging your credit. So you got to get your credit right. So here's what I'm going to do. Just for this particular episode, for everybody in here in the description, I'm going ha- to give them a link. Well, I'm going to let everybody in here get a copy of my ebook for 100 percent free free my metro 2 ebook i got y'all for free as a matter of fact i'm gonna get y'all the link but if they want to um they can text metro 2 to 41372 that's again metro 2 m-e-t-r-o the number two to 41372 y'all can tap into that man i'm gonna give y'all the link to my free ebook and y'all can come to my free workshop i'm gonna break the metro 2 down show you how to remove that bankruptcy remove that eviction move that child support move them student loans i got y'all all y'all gotta do is tap in listen it's you versus you and i want you to be the best version of yourself let's get it y'all let's get it man y'all Y'all make sure y'all tap in with them and the free. We appreciate the free book. I got you, baby. We appreciate it because we got need you. it. I'm going to read it too, right? I'm going to read it got too. To. So, guys, you guys got to understand, he just gave out a lot of game. He gave out tons of game. And he also gave y'all, if y'all if y'all listen, I, I would have started another business. If I don't have a business right now yep. and I'm looking to start a business, I'm going to go ahead and invest in that, especially if I got a job already. I get sure. $150, $147 a month. That's it. And then I fix my own credit if I got to first. Yep. Then I'm going to other people and show them how I did it. That's it. Simple. You got a business plan right there. So he showed you how you could do something right now. So guys, make sure you leave fire. If you feel like this episode helped you, leave fire in the comments. Make sure you like and you subscribe. And like I said, leave a comment. And then go over to other platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever that is. Leave five stars, say something nice so you can move us, move us up those charts because other people need to hear this. Also, follow us on Instagram at underscore on the porch. And y'all can follow me on Instagram at underscore Mr. Dot Mindset BJ. Y'all go ahead and follow me at underscore BJ Real. But most importantly, go follow the podcast at underscore on the porch on Instagram and on the porch on YouTube, guys. Keep liking, commenting, subscribing, and we're going to keep pushing this out. And we are out. Peace. Good. Woo. Good episode. Hey, run that shit up, Chase.